In a secluded coastal town, cradled by steep cliffs and dense whispering forests, an insidious phenomenon begins to unfold. This town, known for its rugged beauty and the resilient spirit of its inhabitants, finds itself grappling with a perplexing and terrifying malady. It comes to be known as the Silent Plague. The first incident occurs subtly, almost imperceptibly. An elderly fisherman, renowned for his boisterous tales and hearty laughter, is found sitting on the docks one misty morning. He stares out at the churning sea, his lips sealed in an impenetrable silence. Concerned, his fellow townspeople approach him, but he does not respond. His eyes, once twinkling with mirth, now hold a vacant, distant gaze. No physical injury mars his weather-beaten face, yet he is utterly unreachable, ensnared in an invisible grip. As days pass, the affliction spreads with a quiet malevolence. Those stricken by the silent plague are found in various parts of the town. A mother, motionless in the market square, a young boy frozen on the steps of the school, a fisherman's wife gazing unseeingly from her window. Each case mirrors the first, a sudden descent into a deep, unnerving silence, devoid of any outward sign of distress or pain. The town's once vibrant life begins to fray at the edges. The cobblestone streets, typically alive with the footsteps of busy townsfolk and the cheerful din of daily commerce, now resonate with a hollow echo. The usual gatherings at the local tavern filled with the clinking of glasses and hearty debates, give way to hushed, anxious conversations. With each new dawn, the town's picturesque landscape, characterised by the grey of the sea and the green of the cliffs, becomes overshadowed by the growing spectre of the silent plague. The illness, indiscriminate in its selection, leaves a trail of mute despair. Families huddle in their homes, eyeing their loved ones with fear and sorrow, wondering who among them might be next. Dr. Elias Harrow, a physician of considerable repute in the coastal town, is a figure marked by his solemn demeanour and meticulous nature. In his late thirties, he possesses a gaunt face that speaks of nights spent poring over medical texts rather than in restful slumber. His eyes, sharp and penetrating, have a habit of dissecting every detail a trait that has served him well in his medical practice. It's a crisp morning when Dr. Harrow is summoned to the docks, a place usually bustling with activity but now shrouded in an uneasy quiet. The subject of this unusual call is a fisherman known to Harrow as a man of robust health and spirited disposition. Upon arrival, Harrow finds the fisherman seated on an old wooden crate, his fishing net idly draped beside him. The man's eyes are wide open, staring out at the sea, but they reflect no recognition of Harrow's presence. Approaching cautiously, Dr. Harrow observes the fisherman's condition. The man's posture is rigid, his hands resting limply on his knees. His face, weathered by years of braving the sea, shows no sign of distress or discomfort, yet there is an undeniable absence of life in his expression. Harrow calls out to him, but the fisherman remains motionless, his gaze fixed on the horizon, as if locked in a trance. With a growing sense of unease, Harrow conducts a thorough examination. He notes the fisherman's vital signs. His pulse is steady, breathing regular, and there are no outward signs of injury or illness. Yet the man's unresponsiveness is unsettling. Harrow attempts various stimuli to elicit a reaction. A sharp clap near the ear, a gentle shake of the shoulder, even a prick to the skin. But the fisherman remains as still and silent as a statue. Confounded, Dr. Harrow steps back, his mind racing through medical diagnoses, yet finding none that fit this perplexing presentation. The fisherman a man known for his hearty laughter and endless sea stories, now sits as a hollow shell, his essence seemingly withdrawn into an unfathomable void. The silent plague, a term that had initially seemed an exaggerated label for an isolated case, begins to manifest its grim reality in the coastal town. Like an insidious tide, it creeps through the narrow lanes and into the homes of unsuspecting residents 
leaving a trail of silent figures in its wake. Dr. Elias Harrow, once confident in his medical expertise, finds himself grappling with a growing sense of helplessness. Each day brings new cases, each echoing the perplexing symptoms of the first. The victims, ranging from the robust dock worker to the gentle schoolteacher, are found in various states of motionless silence. Their eyes, once lively and expressive, now gaze emptily, as if fixated on something unseen and unreachable. Harrow's medical practice becomes a place of desolation rather than healing. The waiting room, where the chatter of patients once filled the air, is now occupied by silent, immobile figures and their distraught families. Harrow's attempts to communicate with the afflicted are met with unyielding stillness. His questions hang in the air, unanswered, as he looks into the vacant eyes of his patients, searching for a sign of recognition, a flicker of awareness. The town's isolation, once a source of pride and independence, now serves as a catalyst for the growing panic. Rumours swirl through the streets like autumn leaves in a gusty wind. Some speak of a curse from the sea, others of an unknown contagion brought by a visiting ship. Fear spreads as rapidly as the plague itself, its tendrils reaching into every household, every whispered conversation. In the local tavern, where townsfolk used to gather for respite and companionship, the mood has shifted dramatically. Hushed voices discuss the latest cases, speculating on causes and cures. The clinking of glasses and the laughter that once echoed through the room are now subdued, overshadowed by the oppressive weight of uncertainty. Harrow, walking through the town, observes the changes with a heavy heart. The lively market square, once bustling with vendors and shoppers, is sparse, with many stalls left unattended. Children, who used to play in the streets, are kept indoors, their laughter replaced by an uneasy quiet. In the secluded confines of his study, a room cloaked in shadows and lined with shelves heavy with medical tomes and journals, Dr. Elias Harrow embarks on a relentless quest for answers. The dim glow of the oil lamp casts a flickering light over the pages of texts, ancient and modern, as Harrow searches for any clue that might unravel the mystery of the silent plague. Surrounded by the musty scent of old books, Harrow pours over documents detailing obscure diseases and forgotten epidemics. His eyes, strained from hours of reading under the inadequate light, move tirelessly across the pages. He investigates archaic medical theories, examines accounts of unexplained illnesses, and dissects case studies from distant lands and forgotten times. As the night deepens, a chilling realization begins to dawn upon him. Nestled within the annals of medical history, he discovers a pattern, a chilling echo resonating through the ages. Tales of similar afflictions, though sparse and scattered across cultures and centuries, share a common thread. The presence of an unnatural silence, a void that seemed to consume the spirit of its victims. Harrow's mind races as he pieces together this puzzle. The accounts speak of illnesses that questioned conventional understanding, where the afflicted became trapped in a silent world, their vitality seemingly drained by an unseen force. These historical outbreaks, though limited in scope, were marked by a similar sense of dread and despair that now grips his own town. In the early hours of the morning, amidst a web of scattered papers and open books, Harrow arrives at a daunting hypothesis. The silent plague is not merely a disease in the traditional sense. It is something far more sinister. It appears to be a sentient force an entity that thrives in the absence of sound and communication. It feeds not on the body, but on the fear and isolation it engenders, growing stronger as its victims succumb to a silent despair. This revelation sends a chill down Harrow's spine. The plague's sentient nature explains the lack of physical symptoms and the failure of traditional medical interventions. It also suggests a terrifying possibility. The plague might be adapting, learning from its environment, making it an unpredictable and formidable foe. With the chilling realization of the silent plague's nature weighing heavily upon him, Dr. Elias Harrow 
sets out to confront the disease in a manner no one in the town could have anticipated. Determined to test his hypothesis, he decides to bring the community together, to challenge the very silence that the plague thrives upon. Harrow begins by persuading the town's leadership to call for a meeting, an assembly of all able residents in the town square. The idea is met with skepticism and fear. The notion of gathering in a time of contagion seems counterintuitive to the panicked townsfolk. However, Harrow's reputation and earnest conviction eventually sway the decision makers. The town crier, one of the few who still dares to roam the streets, makes rounds through the town, his bell ringing sharply in the quiet air. He calls out for a meeting at dusk, his voice cutting through the silence that has blanketed the town. There is an urgency in his tone a plea for unity in the face of an unseen enemy. As dusk falls, the townspeople hesitantly emerge from their homes, their steps slow and cautious. They gather in the town square, a space that once hosted festivals and celebrations, now a forum for addressing their collective nightmare. The crowd is a mosaic of worried faces, each person keeping a wary distance from the other, their voices mere whispers, as if afraid to stir the air too much. Standing atop the steps of the town hall, Dr. Harrow addresses the assembly. His voice, clear and resonant, breaks the pervasive hush. He explains his theory, speaking of the silent plague not as a mere disease, but as an entity that feeds on silence and isolation. He implores the townspeople to unite in their fight against it, to use their voices as weapons to disrupt the plague's hold. There is a moment of silence after Harrow finishes speaking, a collective hesitation. Then slowly, a murmur runs through the crowd. The townspeople begin to talk amongst themselves, their voices tentative at first, but gradually growing in strength. The sound of conversation fills the square, a chorus of defiance against the oppressive silence, as the voices rise, a remarkable change occurs. The afflicted, brought to the square by their families, begin to show signs of awareness. A young girl, previously locked in a motionless state, blinks and turns her head towards the sound of her mother's voice. An old man, silent for days, squeezes his son's hand in recognition. It seems that the sound, the very act of communication and connection, is disrupting the plague's grip on its victims. In the wake of the momentous town meeting, a new chapter begins in the fight against the silent plague. The townspeople, galvanized by Dr. Elias Harrow's revelation and the glimmers of hope witnessed in the town square, rally together to mount a strategic offensive against the insidious enemy. Dr. Harrow, adopting the role of a commander in this unorthodox battle, organizes teams of volunteers these teams are tasked with specific roles, all centered around the critical strategy of breaking the silence. He divides the town into sectors, assigning each team to a designated area to ensure that no part of the town remains engulfed in the perilous quiet. The first team is dedicated to caring for the sick. They visit homes where the afflicted reside, engaging them in continuous conversation, reading aloud or simply maintaining a gentle, ongoing chatter. The presence of constant human interaction becomes a soothing balm, slowly rekindling the spark of awareness in those entrapped by the plague. Another team focuses on creating a symphony of sounds throughout the town. Musicians, amateur and skilled alike, take to the streets, their melodies piercing the heavy veil of silence. The town square, once a site of somber gatherings, now resonates with the strum of guitars, the trill of flutes and the rhythmic beat of drums. Children, encouraged to play outside, fill the air with their laughter and shouts, turning the streets into playgrounds of joyful noise. The townspeople also implement a system of scheduled bell ringing. The church bell, which had remained silent since the onset of the plague, now tolls every hour, its deep, resonant peals echoing through the town, a reminder of their collective resistance. Harrow himself moves tirelessly from one sector to another, offering guidance, encouragement, and lending his voice to the concerted effort. The transformation of the town is evident. 
Windows that were once shuttered are now open, with families gathering on their porches, talking and singing. Artisans and shopkeepers resume their work, their tools and conversations contributing to the ambient chorus. The waterfront, previously desolate, becomes animated with the voices of fishermen and dock workers. As the town immerses itself in this battle of sound against silence, there is a gradual yet perceptible shift. The afflicted, day by day, begin to emerge from their silent prisons. Smiles start to replace the vacant stares, and words, though hesitant and slow at first, begin to flow once again. The town, once besieged by the silent plague, begins to stir with the blossoming signs of recovery. The streets hum with activity, and the faces of the townspeople, once marred by fear and uncertainty, now glow with a cautious optimism. Amidst this resurgence, Dr. Elias Harrow, the architect of the town's unlikely salvation, continues his research, driven by a lingering unease. His investigations lead him beyond the realm of medical texts and into a maze of bureaucratic records and local law. One evening, as he sifts through a pile of old land deeds and maps, a particular document catches his eye. It's a reference to a research facility located in the dense forests that border the town. The facility, long believed to be a defunct remnant of a bygone era, piques Harrow's curiosity. Compelled by an indefinable intuition, Harrow decides to investigate the facility. Under the guise of a morning walk, he ventures into the forest. The path, overgrown and barely discernible, winds through the thick foliage, leading him deeper into the heart of the woods. After hours of trekking, Harrow stumbles upon the facility shrouded in an almost intentional obscurity. The building, a stark concrete structure, looms ominously amidst the greenery. Its windows are dark, its entrance sealed with a rusted padlock. Harrow's sense of foreboding grows as he surveys the site. There's an air of abandonment, yet the facility does not appear derelict. It's as if the place was hastily vacated, left to be swallowed by the forest. Determined to uncover its secrets, Harrow manages to breach the entrance. Inside, he finds a maze of corridors and labs, coated in a layer of dust and silence. As he explores the abandoned rooms, he discovers unsettling evidence. Vials of unknown substances, cryptic notes on experimental research, and most chillingly, a series of documents detailing the development of a bioengineered pathogen. The revelation is staggering. The Silent Plague was not a natural occurrence, nor an ancient curse as some had feared. It was a creation of science, a bioengineered weapon designed for reasons unknown. The documents suggest that the pathogen was intended to be contained within the facility. But a breach, perhaps accidental, perhaps negligent, had allowed it to escape into the surrounding town. Harrow's mind reels with the implications of his discovery. The battle they had waged against the Silent Plague takes on a new, more sinister dimension. They were not fighting a mysterious natural disease, but a man-made catastrophe, a product of human ingenuity turned malevolent. As he exits the facility, the weight of the truth heavy upon his shoulders, Harrow understands that the end of the Silent Plague is not the end of their troubles. The existence of the facility and its abandoned research hint at darker secrets, at questions that demand answers. Who created the pathogen and why? What other secrets lay hidden in the abandoned corridors of the facility? The battle against the silent plague may be over, but the quest for understanding the origins and purpose of this man-made horror has just begun.